you listen carefully, you can hear the shagbark hickory nuts falling. We're just coming into canning season, but there's a lot of other things that you can be doing to store stuff for the winter season or the upcoming leaner times. And we're out today collecting hickory nuts. This is a great foraging item that we are so fortunate to have here. We have a tree line of shagbark hickory uh, that the squirrels conveniently knock those nuts from up higher and we just go along and collect them on the ground. Just to give you perspective, this is one of probably about eight huge shagbark hickory trees that we have along our property line. There's a lot of shagbark hickory on this property, but these ones happen to be right by the barn, so I've been listening to them fall and thought I would come see what I could find. You can see here as I'm walking around, all the shells. The squirrels have been busy in all these hickory trees, but occasionally I find one that's not open. I think there's another one right there. And sometimes the squirrels are even nice enough to throw down nuts that are already shelled for me. I'm going to try and get my hand in here to show you. This is one of our most awesome hickory trees. So that's my hand. So that gives you an idea just how big it is. But look at this jackpot that I just found. Tons of them all in there, which is awesome. I know, I know. I've probably collected enough nuts, but I'm going to collect all these ones too. I can't quite capture the size of these trees that I'm underneath picking, but they are huge. So here's what we picked today. Almost that 1.5 liter thing. I tried to take the ones out of the shells if I could get them out, uh, but some of them I've got to come and kind of crack open. We're going to take these uh, hickory nuts and we're going to test them to see if they're good after I get them all out of the uh, shells. And uh, yeah, we'll take you along for the ride. I want to say in this video that uh, we are forage foraging, but the species of nut that we're collecting, or the nuts we're collecting from, are shagbark hickory, which is native to our area. It's native to quite a bit of the eastern U.S. as well. But there are other species, so you do want to know what species you're using. Uh, what species you're collecting from and how to identify those nuts. Now because we don't have a lot of the other species here we're not going to go through and do any kind of sort of ID per se on this but we just wanted to mention that uh, you, you do want to know what you're collecting from. What the nuts look like, what the tree looks like and uh, I think that's probably a first and foremost with any kind of foraging activity. We still have probably two weeks of collecting these as they fall off the trees behind us. This is what happens when you go to the woods without a bucket. I ran out of room to stuff the nuts, but look, the trees are dropping like mad. So it is going to be an amazing nut harvest year. These are our shagbark hickory nuts, as you know, because you're watching this video. But this is the best harvest we've ever gotten so far out of these. I think we're up to about three gallons worth of uh, nuts so far harvested this year. So we'll see what we can get by the end. Well, it was another windy uh, evening yesterday, so I figured today was going to be a good day to collect nuts, and boy, I was right. Just about, you can see kind of there where the little baby's falling into the uh, bucket. That's how far we filled this, so halfway full anyways, which is awesome because we already had five gallons worth. So now it's going to be time to start shelling these and get them roasting in the oven. But uh, we're going to keep collecting anyways, but I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but it'll be interesting to see by the end of summer just how many nuts we've managed to collect. Well, even though we're still picking out there, uh, one thing I wanted to show you is when you pick them when they're green, they're very, very hard to get these shells off. You can hit them with a hammer or something like that to work it, but realistically, it's best just to leave them. You can see in here, these are a few days old, some of these. And uh, what happens is as they uh, turn 
dry, they turn black and they basically split open. And they'll see, there you go, whoops. And in there is your nut. So right now, we're to the point where we're starting <laughs> to get too many to store in the green things. So I'm going through and taking some of these out and uh, making a pile of basically shelled nuts to then shell again. Well guys, famous last words. I'm done collecting nuts. Now, that's probably not a true statement. I'm gonna keep going, but look what we have so far. This is a 10 pound onion bag and we just weighed it and we're at about nine and three quarter pounds in there. So if I collected just a few more, we'll be at 10 pounds of collected, yeah, they haven't been shelled, but we took out the green outer skin on them. Uh, so we're down to just needing to crack these nuts, which is the real fun part. Before we can actually nut crack these, we need to float them in water so that we can find out which ones are good and which ones aren't. So I'm very curious to see out of this almost 10 pounds, just how many are keepers and how many are duds. So that's our next step. So our bucket is a little over half full of water and we're not gonna pour all this in at once so that uh, we don't have the false sinkers, I guess you could say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour in a little bit at a time and anything that, whoa, sorry, I never thought about that with the camera. I just get it here, there we are. Basically, I'm pouring in a little bit at a time. I'm gonna scoop out the floaters into a uh, bin off to the side because those are supposed to be duds. Now, we have collected these before and we've actually even gotten nuts out of the duds. So, I don't know, but we're gonna start with harvesting the good ones. So I'm gonna scoop these out, keep going, and I'll bring you back to show you how much we actually got out of this 10 pound bag. All right, well, after doing the float test, this container is the container of uh, nuts that sank versus this much larger container. So if I had to guess, I'd say you're a little bit less than a quarter that actually sank. But we remembered back to a few years ago and uh, we had tried this test before and it didn't actually seem to do much. And we're gonna show you what we mean. So in each hand, I have a nut crack from both sections. In this one here with my thumb moving, those are the nuts that sank. And you can see it is a perfectly formed gorgeous nut. That is, I would say a premium one. But here in this one, you can see one of the ones that was a floater. And I would still say that's a perfectly good nut. Now I'm going to actually eat some of that right now and tell you if it tastes weird or anything like that. But I remember when we did this before, we ended up actually doing the ones that floated anyways because it seems silly to waste that much nut product. So, let's see. So here comes the moment of truth as to whether we're going to only be shelling the ones that sunk or whether we're going to go ahead and try and shell all of these ones. And I know some of those floaters are going to be duds, we know that, but it might be worth still going through them. So first up is the uh, premium nut because I want to have something good to compare to. Oh, that is pretty good. I can't even describe them. They're they're walnut very like, but walnut like. But I know once you roast them, they go quite pecan like. Mm -hmm. They're almost pecan like, even raw. Well, pecans so, are technically hickory. Mm -hmm. So, very very wonderful source. Now I'm gonna try the one that didn't sink, but still had a decent nut in. It was slightly discolored, but. It tastes exactly the same. I'm gonna eat it all. <laughs> well, I guess mm. that answers that question for uh, home use. Fantastic having these hickory trees. We are very blessed to have that, but it doesn't mean that you can't go out and harvest these even if you don't have them because many parks and things like that that you walk through have hickory trees. So uh, we're gonna get started on shelling these and uh, we'll bring you back when we've made a bit of a dent and talk a bit about that. Okay, I said I was going to stop but nut picking has become an obsession, an absolute obsession. I'm like up to 15 pounds now of nuts and I can't stop. I hear the squirrels knocking them out of the trees above me and I hear it right there. So I can't stop, I keep collecting, but hey, that's okay because this is a great, great forage food. As promised, this was my final nut collection, maybe, but 
I wanted to show you a little trick to get the uh, nuts out of the husks, I guess you call it, um, because that is something that people have a lot of trouble with sometimes. So I'm going to show you a little trick. So as you can see, we did get quite a haul today, and considering it's the end, last day of September, super pleased. The squirrels are really helping us get nuts. But what I wanted to show you was sometimes, here actually, sometimes you get a nut that you can't break open. A lot of these I'm able to just take the shell off with my hand while I'm out collecting them. But then you get some that, as you can see, it does not break open. So one thing you can do is just kind of let them sit for a day and you'll see this sort of start to develop. You'll get kind of the cracks in the uh, shell and that makes it super easy. This one still isn't going to go with my hands, but if I just push on that little kind of X in the center with a knife, just a regular butter knife, it pops right open. So that is one thing that is very, very nice about these is you can take those shells off. So we're going to quickly finish these up. And as you can see from today's haul, I've already husked everything except for I had a few that even the knife wasn't going to uh, take the husk off. So we're going to leave those sit for another day and come back to it. Worst case scenario, they're going to go into the compost. But let's get the rest of these off here. See how quick it is with the little knife? Just That one's a little bit dark, but that's okay because we're still going to do our sink test and see which ones come out good. But first, we need to weigh them. So we're weighing what we brought in today. 679 grams. So that's like almost a pound and a half of nuts, which is fantastic in my books and then I have my bucket of water ready and we're going to do our float test like I was saying earlier in the video I'm finding if I float test them right away when I bring them in as you can see here we're getting a much higher percentage that are sinking as compared to the floating and uh, one thing that we do know with this is these nuts really need to be processed within the month and I think that's where we've made some mistakes is we've collected and not actually processed them right away. So we've had our learning lesson and now we're processing right away. So I'm going to separate these out and I'm going to take you to show you the shelling and the next step. So collecting nuts has really become quite the obsession. Uh, so as you can see here we've got these ones were the sinkers and these were the floaters. And by doing it right away, definitely getting a lot more sinkers, which is good. Uh, we are still shelling the floaters anyways. So realistically, next comes the horrible task of getting all of the nut out of the shell. Now this would be probably one of the reasons that hickory nuts have lost their favor is this is hard work. Uh, but it is worth it in the end. I had a half full container here. Now this is a one and a half liter ice cream tub. It was half full and I've been working away at it. You can see all my empty shells and I have quite a collection of nuts here. So I want to get this finished up and then we're going to take us to the next step which is roasting these beauties. Like I say, with these hickory nuts you need a cracker and you definitely need a pick to get them out because it is not the easiest task in the world. For sure but there you see sometimes if you're lucky you get a full half section of the nut meat but for the most part you get lots of little pieces which are fantastic for baking and things like that which is what we mostly use these for but the nice part about this is if you set yourself up right you can relax in a nice chair and watch something on tv and just work away slowly at these nuts so even though 16 pounds of them is going to be quite the task it doesn't feel like that much work. So we finished our container of nuts. We brought in another one here just to give you an idea again, just in case you missed it. But that's about what we started with here, which actually is just over a pound. This was 484 grams. So now we're going to take our actual meat pulp, I guess, or, you know, product that we got out of these nuts. And we're going to measure it just to find out kind of a ratio of what you can expect from that 15 pounds of nuts that we collected this year. So we've got our thingy level to zero. 106 grams. So basically one-fifth is about what you get in meat pulp 
from your original nuts. The rest is all shell, so that goes to show that you do need to collect quite a bit. So interestingly enough, we did a reference to a, what 100 grams of pecan pieces would be from the grocery store, and it was $2.97 for 100 grams. So basically we have just over that here, so $3 worth of what would have been pecans, except for we're using hickory nuts. So that's not too bad, considering that's only one pound of our 15 pounds that we have uh, to process down here. So next step for this, I don't usually break anything up too much. Maybe some of these bigger ones, maybe we should, but I'm gonna leave them for now and we're gonna see how it goes. But we're basically heating, preheating our oven to uh, 350 and we're just gonna put these on. I've got a nice little stoneware uh, sheet here. And we're going to put these into the oven at 350 for 10 minutes just to roast them nicely. Uh, the hickory nuts, once you roast them, taste just like toasted pecans. They're amazing. So we're going to get this uh, into the oven. And then once we're all finished and it's had time to cool off, we're going to vacuum seal it and put it in the freezer because that's how we would store these for future use for baking or anything like that. So we'll bring you back for a little taste test once these are done toasting. So there we go. All roasted. We actually did 12 minutes instead of 10 because after taste testing one of the bigger pieces at 10 minutes, we thought it needed a little bit longer. But the nice thing about uh, roasting your hickory nuts is it really brings out that flavor in them. It's, it's, it's hard to explain without actually trying, but it almost is just like a toasted pecan. They're delicious, and we're going to try one right now. Mm, I'm going to have to make some brownies. They're so much better than, well, some people like walnuts. I don't like walnuts. They're so much better than walnuts. It's just like a pecan, but they're tender and, oh, fantastic. If you happen to be fortunate enough to live near a hickory nut tree, definitely go check it out and uh, give them a try because it's well worth it.